and on Zoom. That way there's two recordings just in case one doesn't work. All right, everyone. This is our first uh, session with uh, the Summer Unity Program as, as part of our Friday Night Lab extended in the Summer Edition. Uh, we have Juan with us. Uh, he's a, the resident student expert on this shit, in case I do it all wrong. Uh, we have it in our Discord channel. I put a couple things up. Unity Day 1 document is a couple things that we're going to want to do in case you have not done anything like this. And it gives you kind of a list of things we'll do. I will start walking through them with you, though. Because uh, I have not done it on this laptop yet. So... You want to go to unity.com if you have not done so. I need to get that, change the camera there. There we go. Uh, we're going to say get started. And we do not want to look at that team shit. This is, uh, you see prices, you're like, hell no, not $1,800. We can click on individual. And you can do student or personal. Personal will obviously go well past COS, uh, but in, student gives you access to a little bit more stuff. Uh, so you'll want to sign sign up using however you want to do. Sign up either using the student or personal, uh, and go through the process. And I think they verify you in your your email wherever it goes. Uh, and then what we need to do is download the Unity Hub. Unity.com, Unity Hub. If anyone's doing the sign up right now, I can pause and wait, which is probably what I should do. Anybody? Okay. That's fine. It'll be a little bit easier to read. Let me know when you're all all in, Dave. We're gonna make sure we are. We want to make sure our Visual Studios has uh, game development with Unity stuff in there too. So we're gonna probably check the Visual Studio installation. We'll download some assets that give us some uh, cool stuff we'll use today. And I'll call it. Show you a couple of resources that uh, we can be using. Yeah, we're downloading Unity. Uh, and I know I've already done it on this computer, but well, I actually don't see Unity down below, so maybe I have it, which is good. I wanted to uh, show how to do it. Shit. That's not it. 
There we go. The Unity Hub is, is not the final Unity program. We're going to need to install the current version of Unity uh, once it does it. Uh, yeah. And it should have the most recent one, and it looks like it does. I had to update my uh, laptop one uh, in the living room. I don't need a personal edition. I like. I already signed in though. What the f amateur program? All these video games are made on it. And they can't make the login smooth. That's wrong. That's just wrong. I wonder if learn will lead directly there. I'm going to have to check. Thank you. They changed the logo from the 2020 to the 2021. Really? And it'll take a little bit. Uh, while that's doing that, we'll uh, go check a, take a look at the next thing that we're going to want to grab. You want to go to assetstore.unity.com. And what we're looking for is the starter assets. And I've already downloaded them. Uh, apparently, it's connected it through the living room. But. If I make it bigger, it might show up. No, it doesn't show up well. You want to get the one that says starter asset first person and starter asset third person. And I believe that the standard assets we had, there's a, a workaround. This is for a little bit older. I haven't done the workaround yet, but we can take a look at it in a second. Uh, but I've downloaded all three of the standard starter assets and standard assets that are free. These a lot the the Obviously, the third person and first person are running around as a player rather than. God, when when Redden did it, he made a fucking capsule and it, he just pushed the capsule around and it did like there's no legs moving or anything like that. It was just like a minion without feet just sliding across the ground. But you won't be able to do that until after this is done installing. Takes a little bit of time. Did you have those installed already, Ben? I just installed it already. There, it's called starter assets, first person, third person, and then one says standard asset. Uh, it's for a couple years old. There's a workaround. I haven't done the workaround yet, so. We're not gonna in. We're not going to uh, import it yet, but having it downloaded is helpful because it's got a lot of cool math and stuff we can use for our programming. There's also other ones in here, like you can also see a 2D game starter assets, and I think this is what they use for the learn uh, learn Unity program, where you can get a Unity certificate, and we're gonna explore that this summer. I thought I'd do us a little basic stuff uh, <clears throat> before that we do that.
because that's more of a work at your own pace. It's got some short videos to watch, 15 minute videos, and gives you something to do over the week. There's also some other asset starter kits here. I have not bought any of them yet, though. Some of them are free. I do have quite a few assets, though. I, I like on uh, the Christmas break or Black Friday or whatever it was last year. At the end of the year, I bought a, a few I haven't used yet. I, I haven't used any of them yet because I haven't taken the time to learn Unity. So this is a learning experience for all of us, except Juan. Maybe, maybe I'll get lucky and I'll teach Juan something today and I'll, I'll be like mission complete. There's a lot of things going on. There is. Hey, Chris, I saw you uh, joined us. Welcome. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey. You're not going to let her do all your... What? I was going to say, you're not going to let her do all your Unity programming too, are you? Like, I'm pretty sure she's the one that did all your... CSCI one work slacker. Awesome. I don't know, are you? That's not the same. Right, you've got proof of, uh, you got proof that you did stuff in Unity. It wasn't Unity, right? It wasn't Unreal? Okay. Which I still haven't played. I bought it, but I haven't played it yet. Shame. But I did buy it. So you, you're welcome. We'll make Juan start posting some of his tips and tricks in the uh, Discord channel. Where he found cool free assets. I knew, I knew if I said something, you'd, there'd be something. I know you, I know you, you, uh, you're a student. You're going to try to go as cheap as you can. You found some free shit. I know you did. Wow, one of three. Maybe, uh, well, at least uh, I'm not the only one doing it. I know Dave's doing it, so I'm not holding everybody up. Oh, it went from zero to three to one of three really slowly, and then bam. Okay. Okay, so... Oh, that makes sense. I wonder if it downloaded that already. All right, on Visual Studios, I don't know that I set it up yet on this computer because I didn't have Unity on this computer. So... We'll do download Visual Studios Community 2022. We want to make sure we set it up so that we... Uh, what the hell's the download button? Okay, we, I'll just click it. Oh, it had a right scrub.
And I'm sure you can use this with other IDEs as well, I would imagine. Uh, this is the one I know how to use, so that's the one I'm using. And we'll update it. And I'm going to check available. Oh, I got to wait till it updates first. You guys do anything fun yet this summer? They had a cool uh, summer class in cooking I kind of wanted to take. It's like a four-week class, and every day you cook a cuisine from a different uh, ethnic group. That looked badass. That looked like... like a lot of cooking, but you get to try a lot of different shit. Right? Like, I do not want to stand in the kitchen for four hours. I don't want to stand in the kitchen for two or three hours. Maybe I'll take this class. Right? But, uh, like, I'd rather take it during fall or uh, spring where it's not a four-hour shift. And besides, if I was doing that, I wouldn't be doing this. So I'd rather be doing this with you guys. <laughs> I'm trying to recall. Oh, is it? I guess you kind of can't, like, break the cooking up into hour-long sessions for some of it. You kind of really need the two hours, don't you? I guess there's no avoiding that. I don't know about sitting there for lecture for two hours on cooking, though. Like, what are you writing down there? I don't know. It seems like a hands-on activity. All right. Oh, I haven't taught you yet. Chris's girlfriend, is it Veronica? Or what is it? What's your name? I don't remember. She's not one of my students. You're going to write it on the screen right What's your name? All right, so Chris is Chris and Chris's master. Got it. All you gotta do is tell me your name. Vanessa. Vanessa. I knew it started with a V, I was close. I figured if I said that, one of you would be provoked enough to say, uh, say Vanessa's name. I kind of thought it was going to be you, Chris. She's the one that stepped up and uh, stood up for you. And then, then again, apparently, Chris is master. Chris, Chris is bodyguard. Okay, slowly install that package. Take your time. 
I think it doesn't help that I've got Zoom running and I'm recording through Zoom and I'm recording with Camtasia. Oh no, there we go. It's starting to move. What? It's not my surface. I, I didn't use it. I know what you're talking about. No. I made sure I had plenty of memory. Uh, Camtasia records directly to the hard drive, and it takes up a lot of fucking memory. It's a lot of memory. Like, I can record, like, five videos with Camtasia, like, hour-long lectures on Camtasia, and all of a sudden, there's no more room for anything. So, like, as I, I figured that out last semester, and as I would do it, halfway through the week after I've uploaded everything, I'd delete all the ones I recorded. I was using, I, I wanted to do both because Zoom doesn't always record. It like says it's recording and then when it processes it, it just jacks up the recording and then there's like nothing for people. And when it's lecture content, I kind of need to have lectures and stuff there for students. So I was running uh, Camtasia, which is a recording software overlapping it. There probably is, but when I'm doing stuff with like program where you need to read text and it's not just like it's almost done. I guess I could have done this part ahead of time. Oh, while we're doing that, uh, I can lead you, have you guys starting the other thing because I, I, I've already done it. Uh, where's my Word document? Uh, learn to create games.com. Has some useful stuff. Uh, uh, Unity from zero to proficiency is a handy one. <clears throat> Part of what I'm doing is from this first book right here. And you don't need to buy it to get a lot of its content. If you uh, click on Unity from Zero to Proficiency in the book section, it says Foundations. Uh, the PDF was $3.50. $3 I emailed him and asked if I could share it with everybody, but he hasn't responded yet. Uh, if you scroll down and say, yes, I want to receive my free bonus pack, they will email you some stuff. And I guess I should uh, log in and get mine. Why am I doing that? It's in my damn Gmail. Uh, let's see. It went to promotions. You'll get an email if you sign up for that thing that has this. You can get some of those here. 
and the password was 02 proficiency. God damn it. Let's see, did O T O P R O I F, I mean, I C I E N C Y. Uh, clear all drawings. There we go. Get rid of uh, Chris's writing on my damn screen. Scrub. Uh, you can watch the video if you want. I, I do a lot of stuff in the video. That's what I was following earlier today. Uh, but let's see. What is extract? And Alex, oh wait, I think I've already got it. But you can get it there, and I have it on my desktop in a folder called Unity. There we go. Okay, let's see how my program's gone. Almost done. Uh, something else that was nice that they had on his website. Uh, and this is what I was talking about with some of the other things about the standard assets. He's got his blog. He's got a lot of things in here, what you can do. There's unity, uh, like different books on stuff. I think he's got another screen where it shows it all better, but down near the bottom, there's a C on program C programming. There's Godot. Uh, importing and using standard assets with unity 2020. That's what I'm going to do later. But this is where I got it from. And he also had something in here. It's learn to create dot games dot com slash free books with some of those guides that we were just looking at. So I haven't looked at those yet, uh, but there's some free resources that are available to also learn. Unity uses C Sharp. We've been teaching C++ at COS. They're pretty close. Uh, let's see, how are we? 80%, oh, goody. This should be just, a, I already had Visual Studios downloaded. This should just be the updates. I don't know what the hell is it. See. More, well, he didn't say that shit when I started doing this. He waited till we're 20 minutes into a fucking download before he said shit. So we're waiting now. Oh, while well, we're waiting for that, the other thing we're going to look at. Uh, let's see. Uh, here, we'll do it here. Uh, Learn.unity.com. I don't need a tour. I looked at that already. You might look at the tour if you want. Dismiss. Back to pathways. Or home. Let's go back to home. That is not the home I wanted. Uh, so pathways is what I was looking at. We're going to cover some of the stuff in Essentials today, but Junior Programming Programmer has you working through a project. Uh, and then Creative Core later on will have us adapting the project. 
I mean, there's stuff in here on VR, but this stuff eventually leads to a certificate of some sort. And they have other like create with co projects to do creating with. Uh, so we're going to check that out as uh, something to do between meetings. Again, I I'm not learning this shit as you guys are, except for Juan. So I am not a master in this shit. I'll just be talking about what I learned during the week. If you guys work on Unity and you guys find something that you like that I don't talk about next week, share it. Let's let's make this a group learning thing. This might take a while. We're at 99%. Finish up. I don't know that we need it for what we're doing today. Maybe I should have just done that on later. <laughs> I didn't actually plan on working with any scripts today. So let's make a, uh, while well, that's doing that. Nope, there it goes. Uh, I'm going to hit modify. This is what I want to cover with you guys. Make sure you find and do game develop with Unity should be installed. You want that in there if you're using Visual Studios 2022. Uh, looks like I've already got that in there. Good. So Unity, let's do a project. I'm going to say a new project. Uh, I don't want a template. I didn't say template. That one? What's the difference? Does it make the, any of the activities of putting shit down in, in any different? It's just the rendering? What? That's true. Uh, let's go. Let's call this week one. And 3D core, good to go. Create project. I got the right version. I only have one version of this. Okay, good. Next week, I'll have Unity up and open before we uh, start. But I wanted to make sure everyone knew how to do it and get it downloaded. Yeah, create with code and create with code two are part of the junior programmer pathway, setting you up to take the cert certification exams and build your portfolio for the job market. So we're definitely that. I think that's a good idea that we go through these pathways, uh, and you'll be you should be able to go through some of them fairly quick, especially the Unity Essentials, because I'm 
I believe I'm covering a lot of it today. I haven't started doing it. Really? It went from 15 seconds to two minutes? You're right, it is. MF. Oh, I'm kind of glad Juan's here. If I fuck up, he'll just be able to go like, nope. That's not how that shit works, Mr. Jones. I want you, if you don't do it, Juan, if you let me be a total jackass and say the wrong shit, I'm going to fuck you up in Friday Night Labs. Okay? I'm not your teacher right now, and I can get away with saying this shit. I will be soon. At least, let's see. Ben and David are in my class. I think. Shit, is Eric in Cult Three? You're in Cult Three too. Chris was gonna be. He done fucked that shit up. I can't change shit. I can't just, I can, I could add you to the class where you could sit in, but you're not going to get credit for it. And I know how you sit in on classes. You fucking don't show up. All right. So here we are before we get started. Uh, something you might want to do. Where is it? Let's see. It's. What the fuck is it? Maybe preferences. Ex yeah, preferences. Go to external tools. And this is where you can set your IDE. Uh, so it's file. No, sorry. Edit, preferences, and external tools. I wanted to get that done. Uh, let's see, component, where's the import? Uh, you, I'll, yeah, it should be, or whatever your IDE you're using. I imagine you're using Visual Studios because you've been taking the classes. You're not a rebel like Ben and Juan. All right, so set it there. It'll be your external script editor. We're not doing any scripts today. Uh, but we're also going to, since we're going to use them today and it reloads shit, I believe when you do it, we're going to install some packages. Where is it? Window game. What the fuck is it? Assets import package. Maybe it's not in there. Where the hell's the store shit? Oh, since we already had the, uh, if you had download the assets before you finish doing it and everything, it's already down. No, it isn't. Where is it? There we go. Thank you. Let's uh, do the two starter packages. See, I had a I got a bunch of shit I ain't used yet. Stuff to make more like. <laughs> right. 
I wanted to make like a role playing game, like Dark Souls or some shit. Uh, so we'll download the first person and third person. Right? It'd be fun to make a cool, uh, you know, 3D role-playing game like that. And I won't trigger that right away. We'll go over some other shit first. Uh, but it's easier to get it down or imported now. The time invested doing this is way better than what Reddit did. He tried to make all this shit by hand. It was terrible. Run around as a fucking capsule. It's lame. And that's why we did that first. Just to get this shit done. Now, there's a manual for how to use all of this. I put it in our uh, Discord thing, the Starter Assets documentation. Uh, and we'll use, well, I'll touch on something I grabbed from it there, but there's got to be a way to. Uh, attach it to like a, a controller and shit like that. I just had it working on the keyboard when I was demoing it earlier. And we'll grab the other one. Uh, notice you can tell which ones you've already got downloaded because it doesn't have the download arrow. So I did first person. Well, I'll grab third person. Say download. And import. All done. Okay. Uh, let's just click on assets. But assets. All right. So you know, I want to select that. Uh, there's a couple areas of the. Actually, is everyone ready to start doing stuff? Is anyone still importing or downloading anything?
Anyone still going? Okay. Let me know when you're done, David. Is yours all downloaded? Okay, so we'll wait on bed. Well, I figured you're all done. You got Vanessa taking care of shit. I got jokes. This is what happens when you don't show up to my fucking class. And you go and sit in on Mr. Redden's class so you can spend time with Vanessa. I got jokes. I'm better. Oh, wow. Ow, Eric. You got a slow download speed. All right. We're not going to use Visual Studios today, Eric. So... As long as you got that going, uh, do you have Unity up? Okay. I can start telling you guys about some of the stuff in the window without us doing stuff. Uh, we got a couple areas that we're going to be doing stuff in. Uh, hierarchy has where like all the objects and stuff go that we're going to be working on. Uh, just like in C++, we can do parents and children. Uh, stuff like that. I don't know if we, I don't think we covered that really that much in, in CSCI 1, but in CSCI 2, I know you can do. Uh, we start off with a main camera, which is the viewing angle and a source of light, directional light. Uh, there are a couple of things that are worth noting here. The hand allows you to move on the screen. I'm holding down the left mouse button and moving left and right. If I hold down the right mouse button, I can pan and circle. Okay. Uh, when we have some objects, we'll go over the other ones, but that's the starting one right now is the hand is your moving one. Okay. We have in the screen, uh, the scene screen, the compass thing right here, and it's got green is the Y, X is red, Z is blue. And if you double click on one of those, you will align the camera, our viewpoint, not the main camera, uh, but our viewpoint along that. So if I double click Y, I am now looking down from above. Y is up on this. It's not Z isn't up. Y is up. Uh, Z is in and out of the screen generally. The main camera is what we're going to see when we run the program. Uh, you always want to save it and, and before running it, it should save automatically, but when you're running it, it's going to shift over to game mode right there. This is what the main camera sees. Uh, if you'd like, you can always take game mode and drag it down here so that you can see both things at the same time. Uh, I don't know that it, after, after a while it gets a little distracting. Uh, so not necessary, but we're going to have our, all of our objects here in this hierarchy on the left scene is where we do all our work and game is what happens when we run the program. After we've done some work, we'll show, uh, that inspector over here on the right, this box has, whenever we have an object selected, like the camera or the directional light, it has a bunch of boxes in it. Transform has its position its rotation and its scaling. So this allows us to do a lot of the stuff in it that we want right there, uh, just for setting everything up. 
and we're going to use that as one way of doing it. Uh, but inspectors over there. Then down on the bottom is project and console. Console will have stuff appear. I don't know. I haven't noticed using it that much myself. Uh, but I imagine there's times we use it. Project has all of our assets, and that's the stuff we're going to be using. Uh, so I'm gonna. I don't like this overhead view. I can't see shit really there. I don't like that either. So. Uh, mouse wheel rolls you in and out. And without having a frame of reference, it's kind of hard to say where I'm going to look. So what I'm going to do first. Are you done downloading, Ben? All right. Eric, I'll have you follow along with this. I am recording it, so you can always uh, watch it later rather than... Or how far along are you, Eric? How long? How much longer does it say you have? Okay, follow with record. Okay. Uh, so the first thing we'll do, you can make a game object up here, and do a three D object. I find this is tedious, but that is one of the options. You can also right click in the box, the hierarchy box, say three D object, and what we're going to start off with is a simple cube. Uh, and so there's my cube. It's right there. Uh, it's kind of a little awkward to see. So like it's one block. Let's make this our ground. And recall Y is upward. So we don't want the structure to get big in the Y direction. So maybe we can make this like, you know, 50 by 50. X is 50 and Z is 50. And it gives us now a floor. We got a floor. Maybe we can make it a little bit bigger. Let's go 100. So I got this object. It's a floor. It's all white. It's pretty boring. Uh, if you have some assets that are some ways of shading it that you like already, uh, we can do it. We can check all materials. And we can see in the in the all materials a bunch that's already done. If you drag and drop a material on it, it up updates the color of it, and it shows up down here in the inspector box. I dragged and put grid orange zero one mat on there. Okay. There are other ways of going about doing that. If I don't want to have that, if I want like my own. I can in my in assets, uh, I can come over here and I can say uh, create and we can go material. And if I just want to like let's make it a blue, pretty blue for a second. And I'll call my new asset blue. Uh, uh, that's pretty blue. I like that. That's a, a good blue. So we can make our own materials and apply them to give it coloring. Or you can install some that you've downloaded. Uh, from that learn to create games thing, I downloaded the book resources. They had a couple good ones uh, there that I liked. They had tile and pavement. I'm going to drag both. I'll start with tile. You can just drag it down and drop it down here. What the fuck? Oh, that's I know the problem. This is on my other computer. So I need to download it here real quick. And now I can do it. Drag it and just drop it in the assets thing, which I selected right here. I selected assets over here in the project area. This is where it stores all the stuff that is not in our current thing. And I can also do the... I literally am just dragging it in.
which is pretty cool. So if you've got some, and, and I'm pretty sure that works with all the different materials and stuff we can want to use. Uh, but I can take this and now drag pavement onto there and it tiles it that way. Or I could use tiles as well. Let's go with pavement. Uh, if you think it's like the, the gridding is a little big, it's kind of big since it's 100 by 100. Uh, you can come over to the tiling and make it like each thing smaller by increasing the tiling over here when you have the object selected. Where is it? Wait, wait it's doing that one. So I'm going to click on pavement. Wait, dragged it over there. Where is the tiling? Where's the tiling? Where'd it go? I know it's there. Oh, I know the difference. Uh, I did. Did I do this? Did I do this last time? And drag pavement onto that? No. No. What's the difference between these two? Huh. I'll have to look that up later. I changed the resolution on um, in the other room. That's not it. All right. So I got this table. All right. And I'm going to rename this. I'm going to call this ground. This is going to be my floor. Okay. And why don't we just set the grounds position at zero, zero, zero. When you want to undo stuff, you can do them one at a time, or you can do undo history. Undo history is kind of cool. You can undo many things at once. I can go all the way, I'll undo everything I've done. Or I can go, uh, I didn't want to do any of that changing of position. So I will go back all the way to rename cube and put it back where it was. So you can re undo more than one thing at once pretty quickly. I'm going to do this at like zero. Let's go negative one for Y because that's my up and down. And we'll go zero for Z. How about that? That sounds pretty good. Uh, then I'm going to close the undo history. And let's say we want to uh, make another box. Let's make another box. I'm going to click something to put on our uh, ground here. So I'm going to right click and say 3D object. I'm going to make a cube. We can make other things, but basic shapes work pretty, pretty well right now. And when I click on cube, it should take me to where cube is which looks like it is below my table right now. So let's go over to where the hands are. The hand is over here. This is view table. The next one down is move object. And you can see the green, red, and blue arrows. And they correspond with the green, red, and blue axes right here. So if I grab the green arrow, I can move the box up just like that. And that box is a little hard to see. Say that again. Oh, that, that's actually a little bit, a lot better than, oh, that's. 
That is way better. I like this. I don't, that box is hard to see. I'm going to drag blue onto it. I want it to show up. And I feel like I'm a little high. Yep, that box is really high. So let's put the down arrow. And you can see the shadow. The shadow is coming from the directional light. Damn, that is way easier to use. All right. So I got a box. I can make it bigger. Uh, let me. There we go. I, I got the box. I can change the boxes scaling. Uh, X should make it go in the X direction. There's a couple ways I can do it. I can type the number in the X box. And it makes it longer. Another thing you can do is you can hover over the X, hold down the mouse button, and drag left or right. So that's another way of resizing. There is a third way of resizing, and it's one of these tools right here. It's the scale tool. When you have the object selected, like I've got cube selected, if I hit the letter Q, it puts it on the hand. If I hit the letter W, it hits puts it on the next one down. And literally going across those the QWERTY keys takes you down the list. E takes us to the, the rotation. R takes us to the scaling, where I can scale doing this now. Or I can do that over here, and I can do any of the scaling right here by holding down, when I get to the letter, hold down the left button and do that. I'm gonna, let's just make them all, I don't know, two by two for now. Okay, I've got a box. If I wanna make another box, you can right click on cube and say duplicate. Or the other option is hold down, uh, let me rename cube, because cube is the generic thing. Let's call it box. So I've got box highlighted. I can either right click and say duplicate, or I can hold down, if you're on Mac, it's the Apple key in D. If you're on uh, a PC like I am, you hold down Control in D and it duplicates. It makes another box in the exact same position. Uh, but if I want to move it, I can click on box, the next box, get to the move object and drag it around. Let's say I don't like that coloring. I want to make a new material. I, I want some different colored boxes. Uh, so we'll go with create material. Let's call this yellow. And in the yellow, you go over to the albedo where it says albedo, where it's white box. Click on the white box. It allows you to select the color. Uh, and then I close the color box. You can even make it look a little bit metallic-y. So there's some tinkering you can do with the way the colors look. And now that I've got a yellow material that's a little shiny because it's metallic-y, I will drop it, drop it on box number two. I think that's box number two. Yeah, they're the second box. Okay. Uh, and we can make more. Let's make a few more. 
and maybe give them each their own color. So let's make a couple more materials. I'll call this one red. And I need to move that box so it's not in the same spot as the others. So that's box two. I'll rename this. I'll call this the red box. Box one was the yellow box. And this box was blue box. Um, I'll, let me move a few more around so they're not overlapping. Uh, let's go rainbow. Uh, let's make orange, green, and purple. Fuck indigo. Indigo is lame. It's pride month, right? Let's do some pride colors. Uh, so orange. All right, and box three, if I click on box three, it'll tell, show me which one it is. And I'll just put it there. And we'll call that orange box. And I might as well rename the other ones. Let's call this green box. And purple box. Uh, make some more, a few more materials. I don't like that. That's a little too bright. Give it some metallic sheen to it. A little bit better. And one more. Let's make it purple. All right, so I got a few boxes there. I'll pause and make sure everybody else has made a few boxes. If you didn't make six, if you made less and don't want to make six, you don't have to. Cool. Whatever, whatever color kind of boxes you want to make. Uh, nice. Uh, does it make each side of the box show the same picture? Oh, I, you know what? Now I need a now I need a new box. I need a new box. This will be Oh, I did create. Damn it. Oh well. 2 2 Two, and let's get El Jefe on there. I'll put me and my wife. Let's do both.
I had to download it first. Oh, and then that's a bad chick. Let's, it's not square. Let's go with a square one. We'll do a hot day. And okay, close that. Ha! Ah! Fun. Okay, so we got some boxes. Uh, let's. Is everyone ready for more stuff? Fun stuff? Let's get a dude on here that we can run around with. So the easiest way to do this, now that we have our first person and th third person thing set up, go to tools, starter assets, and do reset third person controller armature. Okay. Tools, starter assets, reset third person controller armature. And we have a dude way over Way over there, and he's a robot. Okay. All right, so we got a little dude. So, how can we use some of this stuff? What we're going to do to run the game, game as it is right now, uh, up top is a little play arrow. You can click the pay, play arrow alternatively, control P works. I like control P because it's easy to remember to do. And I'm dude right now. So A S D W are moving keys and you're moving kind of slow. If you want to move faster, you can hold down the shift key and he'll, I wouldn't call that a run, but it's something. So we got a little dude that we can run around with. Now, notice up top, my little arrow for the play button is blue. I'm going to show you what happens if I try to make some changes here. I'm going to drag this to over here like that. Wow, it's not letting me do that. Normally it does. Normally it will let me fuck shit up. I got to go what? Oh yeah. So I'm going to change the yellow box and it's there. And now if I hit control S or do file save, control S also works. It says I must exit play mode to save the scene. And when I exit play mode, the box goes back to yellow. So if you were doing shit in play mode and you're like, I want to go change some stuff and you forget that you're in play mode and you change a bunch of shit, you won't be able to save it. And when you exit play mode, all that stuff will be gone. So pro tip is to always make sure you're outside of play mode when you're in editing. Cause I, you will forget more than once. I'm sure. Uh, and you're going to be frustrated. All right. So we got that going on. Uh, I can kind of make these into let's, let's work on making these into like, let's make a stairway. Oh, I love the AS. This is so easy with the fucking right button and the ASDW keys. It's like intuitive. Uh, let's see. I'm going to make it longer in the B direction. I got a couple ways I can do it. I can use the scale tool and just drag it along. And I'll make it shorter because it's a little tall right now. And I can even move it down where it's flush. 
Juan, do you have a tip on how to make sure it's exactly flush with something? Is there some secret thing? Because I can make it sink into the bottom. You just got to kind of have to look. Like, All right, so I'm making a stairway. Let's see, I've got my red. Oh, let's make these easy numbers to work with. Let's say 12. Negative 20 for Z. And I'll set Y at zero. If it hovers a little bit. And now that I have those numbers, I can start. Let me get that NASA box out of here. It's going to be in the way of my staircase. So I can click on the orange box. Red was at 12, negative 20. I can try dragging this and resizing it but it's a pain in the ass it's kind of easier to just line those up right now and slide it now let's see what is my scaling on red we'll go z at 16 make this easy and why it will say point point let's go point five and three uh so on orange i can do slide so it's just barely touching it and i can do the same thing three and 16. And I'm, the way I'm doing it is I'm lying. So I can see the bottom of the box right here with the orange outline line. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing it until it looks like it goes away. It's okay if it's a little high. It seems like a little, I don't know. Let's maybe make that one a little tall. Let's make this one. Two, and then this one, we had three, uh, 16. And what were my, you know what? It's getting kind of tedious to try to do these all one at a time. So check this out. I can, instead of doing, I've got red and yellow. Is that yellow? That's fucking orange fail. That is not where I, what I wanted right there. So I'm going to click on yellow, uh, blue, I'll click, I'm holding down the control key to collect, select the other ones, uh, green and purple. And when you have more than one box selected, you can see the highlight around each of them. Yellow's highlighted, yellow, blue's got a red box around it. Notice over here in my box over here to the transform. They all say Y is 0.48. That's what they all have in common right now. Where they show dashes, those are all different. But if I want to make them so they're all the same size, say I want the stairs to be all the same width and same length, I can do that. And now they're all the same length. Uh, this was at two that two and 20 no negative 20. and now they're all stacked up in one spot 
And now I can just start sliding them over. Let's see. So, no, orange is the next color. What am I doing? Fucking don't even remember my damn rainbow. That's a fail. So now I can bring them, and now they're all lined up and they're the same shape. And now I can just grab the green, slide it over. If I'm aiming for precision and want to make it look good. Right, but I don't know exactly where this left line is ending. Like, I don't know where that's ending. And I, I bet I could work out the math, but this is close enough. Uh, I do want to resize it. This one, red was one. Red needs to go up a little bit. Red was one, orange was two, green is not the next color, you scrub. Yellow is the next color. Amateur hour right now. Oh, wait, wait. These are all at point. Let's highlight all of them and just say Y is 0.85. Then I know they're all at the same height. Oh, it's when I rescale them, though, it changes. Okay, red, orange, yellow is there. I want to make this three high. Oh, that's the problem with doing all the same lines. Because it's going from the center. Roy G. Make that a four. Uh, we'll grab the blue box, slide it over. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And we will scale or make it go up till it's lined up. Set Y at six. And drag it up. All right, that's close enough. I don't need to check the bottom. I got a fairly rainbow staircase right there. And it, if I wanted to move the staircase, it's a little bit pain in the ass right now if I wanted to move them all, right? So what we can do is I can create an empty object. And that game object I'm going to call stairway. Rainbow stairway. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight all the other boxes, the six colored ones I have. And I'm going to drag them and drop them by placing them on rainbow stairs. And they become part of rainbow stairs. They are children of rainbow stairs. So if I click on rainbow stairs, it highlights all of them. And I can move them all at once. Look at that. And what's kind of nice, if I've got the staircase and I, let's say... I'm really d digging the ASDW with the site thing. Let's say I want to make another one. I can right click rainbow stairs, say duplicate that, and it will make a second rainbow staircase. What, what? So it duplicated everything. Maybe, maybe this one will rotate. Let's see. We want to, we want to rotate it around the x axis cuz x is red. Am I doing that right? So 180 rotation x. That is so not what I wanted. One of these should do it. 
Well, I rotated it. Now I just got to bring it back. Oh, I can click on the Y overhead. All right, I got myself a rainbow staircase. I'm under it. What the hell is happening? Oh my gosh. How did my camera get flipped upside down? Oh, that's... There we go. All right, so I got this staircase. Uh, notice sample scene's got an asterisk next to it. It's not saved. We've got everything saved in the scene. Control S saves, or you can do file save. And I can run it and move my character around again. And shift makes me run faster. Let's see if these are too tall. Space bar jumps. Can I fall in that crack? Uh, you can fall off the edge. Gravity is keeps bringing us to the... When I fall off the stairs, it drops me down. So, theoretically, I can kill myself. I'm falling and I fall. If you run off the edge with your character, yippee ki -yay, you're you're not going to die. You're just going to keep falling. Uh, so, at that point, Hit control P or click this to end the play animation if you fall off. Okay. Uh, so let's make a few more. Let's put a, let's create a, a sphere. What happens if I make this sphere, I tile it with me? Uh -huh. That's creepy. That's fucking awesome. Now, if only I could make it so it made a Pac-Man, I could make myself a Pac-Man. Did it just wrap around the whole thing? It did. It wrapped a square thing around a sphere. Huh. And I could make more of those. So this is uh, David Ball. Creepy David Ball. And I could make another one. And... We were resizing and wrote scaling stuff over there. I can also do uh, scaling and rotations over here. So actually, let me. 
like the they're both facing to the left now but I can click on the rotate one and you can see if you look at it there's colors in this spherical thing so the green line will rotate me around the green which is the y-axis and it shows you how much of an angle you're sweeping as you do it and you can rotate you know around the blue or around the red which is kind of fun uh you can do the scaling thing here I can resize there. Ooh. A wall of David. A round wall of David. Oh. I can make it almost flat. So it's like a flat, flat oval. Trippy. Uh, I'll rescale those all the three real quick. Uh, this one right here, it's called the rect tool. It's a little awkward. It allows you to do something like a resizing here. If you grab the corner, you can kind of resize all at once. It's making it like a concave thing. It's kind of weird. But there's things you can play around with there. Uh, here's something you guys might like. I'm sure you can imagine when you've got a whole bunch of shit going on, this hierarchy box is filled with shit. You can obviously hit the arrow to close them so they don't show up as much. Uh, but like, let's say you're like, I want to change the boxes right above the hierarchy, the box, there's a little search box and whatever you type, if I say box, it highlights all the boxes, it shows all the boxes in their normal material color. Everything else gets grayed out. I can do the same, same thing with the ball. So everything gets grayed out on my screen except for things that have ball in the name. That can be pretty handy when you're trying to find stuff, uh, especially when this gets pretty big. We can do the same thing down in the project area. Notice we got a lot of shit right here. Uh, a lot of stuff that we can play with. You can come over here and type blue and it'll show me everything that's got blue in the name. I think my file was called David, so we'll look for David, the two things that are David. Or if you want to look for a type of thing, you can type T and then the, what it is, like materials. It'll show me all the folders that have materials in them. So T mat has all the ones that have mat in the name. Uh, and if you type actually materials, it'll narrow it down to the folders that have them. There's one right here in assets. All materials has one in it. And I suspect starter assets or packages has another one somewhere in it as well. Yeah, starter assets has it in environment art. Uh, or we could do like scripts, T scripts. We don't have a lot of scripts. We, we haven't worked with scripts yet with yet with those yet. That's for, uh, when we do C sharp and we start pro doing some coding, but we can do stuff that way. Now you can imagine if you're making a game and you got a lot of stuff going on, uh, Sometimes shit gets repeated. You're going to like make the same level, but shit changes. So one option we have is I can close it all down. 
scenes is in the assets folder scenes and I'm gonna hit control s make sure everything's saved and let's rename sample scene to scene one so you gotta do it right here scene a I don't want to reload the scene. All right, guys, the scene's fine. Just wanted it that way. Uh, I should be able to copy it. Nope, not there. Uh, can I copy it up here? Save scene as. So I can save scene as, and I'll just call it scene B. And notice it starts me in my assets folder for my week one project. So I want to put it in the scenes file. There's my scene A. I can save it here. And now I've got two scenes. They look identical, but let's change some shit. Uh, I'm on scene B. Let's change these to have, uh, let's see. Why is it not doing both? Oh, if I drag it up, put it, I didn't do it. You're supposed to be able to change more than one at once. It's not letting me do it. Okay, well, I've got, I've got scene B saved, the purple's gone. It's pavement now. And if I go back to scenes, we can see that they're different. Scene A's got the purple, scene B's got the pavement. But if you're copying stuff like that, you can have it work like that. So that's kind of cool. Uh, we can also, let's see. Uh, let's do a show how we can make this uh, something we can do in a web thing. So I'm going to do file and I'm going to go to build settings. And I'm going to say we're going to leave it there, Windows, Mac. And I'm just going to, I need to add an open scene. Let's add scene A, the one we're in. And I'm going to say build and run. And it's going to ask me where I want to save it. I can save it in the same spot. Uh, I think I'm going to make a folder real quick that says like web, web files, web exports. And I'll select there to do it. And now it goes full screen. I mean, a wet full screen pick. That does not look like a yellow. Oh, looks like a yellow with the reflection, but from the other angles, it doesn't look like it. And there we go. We got a, that's how we can do web games. Uh, when we got more stuff going on, how do I get out of this? Alt tab. Yeah, there we go. Alt tab. Uh, when we have stuff set up for doing Android and stuff like that, look at this PS5. Oh, uh, my license doesn't cover that. But we look, we can make Android and iOS. We just don't have the modules installed. So we can make stuff for the phone as well. 
And if you're a baller like Juan, he can start making shit for the PlayStation. Right? That's when he's got making money and can afford a license. So, that's kind of what I had set up for this week. Get everyone installed. Get you some how to build some stuff. Put a character in it that you can play and run around with. Uh, using the starter assets is pretty nice. I have not looked into switching into first person mode. Have you done done these assets before, Juan? How do you switch to? I. Yeah, we got to overlap the first person camera on the robot, don't we? Control P. Uh, what is he doing? Why is it? I don't want to do that. What are you doing? Did I hit it twice? I fucking hit it twice, didn't I? I closed it and reran it immediately. Amateur hour. Nope. It just wanted to act weird. I like moving with the uh, right mouse, mouse button in the ASWD. I find it weird to like do the when I have the hand like this does like I'm going like left and right with my mouse and I it's like awkward it's harder to control but if I that is definitely easier oh really ooh All right, so that's what we got for today. Uh, okay, so what we want to do to try to get that cert certification, see what we can do to do that. Let's come back over to uh, learnunity.com pathways. Uh, you want to start with Unity Essentials. I'm going to close this for now. And I've already I started doing a little bit and, and start working through those. If you get through Unity Essentials, it should be, it says two weeks, but I don't think it's two weeks. I think it's like two weeks if you have like 30, uh, 30 minutes a day. I don't know. We can see what you, we get through. I haven't gone through the whole thing, obviously. I just did a couple pieces. But after uh, Unity Essentials is Junior Programmer, and that's where it's got a project for us to do. Unity Essentials is just learning how to navigate the Unity stuff quite a bit. We'll go into Junior Programmer sometime in the next couple weeks. Uh, but I would look into working through the Unity Essentials. Okay? And that's it for today. There is your introduction to uh, Unity. How was it, Juan? Was it was it all right? Did you learn anything? Yes. 